got something that might interest you. <laughs> hey everybody, DeHub's here, ready to tackle a top 10 video. I recently got into video game collecting about a year ago, and one of the systems that immediately caught my attention was the Nintendo GameCube, as I did not play it a lot during its lifespan. I actually played the GameCube more when I got my hands on a Wii, because in actuality, I only owned about four Wii games through that console's entire life. I actually used it to play a lot of GameCube games because during this generation of consoles, I was playing mostly PS2. In fact, I became a bit, I don't want to say fanboy, but I, I did tend to gravitate towards PS2 games at the time. And I guess part of that had to do with, um, I think I lost my GameCube, or I lost Super Mario Sunshine, I know that for a fact, and for some reason I just didn't really get into the GameCube that much. There were games that I definitely wanted to play, but never really got around to playing them until the Wii came out. Not exactly sure how that happened, I don't have a great memory of that time period. That's enough talking. Actually, I'll do one more preface. I know I don't have my list of GameCube games that I own, anywhere on my channel for you guys to see. So if there's a game on this list that I didn't mention, leave it in the comments and I'll tell you if I have it or not. And I'm actually trying to do a Craigslist pickup for GameCube, so I may be getting some of these games. I may be getting some games that I want that aren't on this list, but that purchase is not finalized yet. So I also might not be getting any of them. We'll just see how it goes. So without further ado, let's jump into this top 10 list. And I won't be doing any honorable mentions just in case I want to do a part two to this video as well. All right, I think that's everything. Starting at number 10 is Pikmin 2. Now, I personally don't care that much for the Pikmin series. It's more of Jessica's series, my girlfriend. And I recently got her Pikmin 1 and she really likes the series. So that's why this game is on here. You know, sometimes you gotta buy a game for your girlfriend to keep her happy, you know, that way she doesn't mind when you're buying nine other GameCube games. And uh, she doesn't get to play a lot of games. Doesn't She's not into a whole lot of series, but she's into Pikmin. So if I can score Pikmin 2 for her, that's gonna be a good day. Um, but as far as Pikmin goes, I watch her play it and it just seems way too stressful. It's not that I don't like it. It's not that I think it's a dumb game. I just don't like to be stressed out when I'm playing video games. And I watched her play Pikmin 1 and it looks just like a nothing but an all day stress vest. I mean, maybe if you're good at Pikmin, it's not that bad, but I don't know. It, it doesn't really look like my style of game just because uh, the Pikmin's deaths can be so graphic at times, and uh, it, it just it just seems too stressful. Coming in at number 9 is Beyond Good and Evil. So one thing you're going to notice with this list is it is mostly games that I've played that I know are really good, and I want to go back and get them and just really enjoy my GameCube and the time that I spend with it. Beyond Good and Evil is not one of those games, though. I never played this game growing up. That shouldn't come as too big of a surprise because for as far as I can remember with the N64, no. the GameCube, and the Wii, my parents were buying me games. I was not really buying them myself or I would tell them you know, what I was interested in. And Beyond Good and Evil isn't really a game that I think would jump out to a... I don't know exactly when the game came out. I was about eight when the GameCube came out though. You know, an 8, 9, 10 year old, th this doesn't seem like a game that would really interest m me at that time period. But now that I'm an adult, now that I'm interested in games outside of what Nintendo did, uh, I don't know who made Beyond Good and Evil off the top of my head though, but I think it's getting a sequel, so that's pretty cool. Um, and it, I it might be Ubisoft, but I could be wrong there. I could be wrong. I did not fact check myself before starting this. Anyway, as an adult in my 20s, Beyond Good and Evil looks like a really good time on the GameCube, and I've heard nothing but good things about it. So I wish I could sit here and praise the game and talk about all the highlights of the game, but I just haven't played it yet, and I haven't watched any video footage of it. Trying to keep my experience not unique. I don't, I don't know the word for it. Um... But I'm looking, I'm looking out to get Beyond Good and Evil nowadays because it, it, I've heard nothing but good things about it. So coming in at number eight is Mario Party Five. Yet again, I love the Mario Party series. I didn't play it a whole lot outside of the Nintendo 64 lineup. I owned at least two, maybe three, maybe one. Not sure, but I definitely remember Mario Party Two. Play, I probably played that game 
the most out of any game on the Nintendo 64. Going into the GameCube, though, I owned Mario Party 4. After that, we really just rented the Mario Party series. I don't think I bought another Mario Party game until Mario Party 10 on the Wii U, because my family got really excited about that. I had the Wii U, I was still living with my mom, and she was really into Mario Party at that time. Uh, we went and got Mario Party 10 when it came out. Now that I've got Jessica into video games, she's really into the Mario Party series, and on her own, she has bought Mario Party 1, Mario Party 2, uh, we had to rebuy Mario Party 4 because mine doesn't work. Mario Party 7. So she has picked up four of the Mario Party games on her own, and she's going for a complete Mario Party lineup. So, you know, you gotta have Mario Party 5, and if you're already collecting for the GameCube, you might as well. You know, Jessica and I do enjoy to sit... We do like sitting down to play these Mario Party games. So it's it's just a perfect fit, right? I like collecting for the GameCube. She likes collecting the Mario Party games. It's just a match made in heaven when you talk about Mario Party 5. Of course, Mario Party 6 could be on this list as well once we get Mario Party 5. And really, you if you play the Mario Party games, you know that you don't have to play them in order. So it's really just which one do we see a better deal on, Mario Party 5 or Mario Party 6. We've actually ran across Mario Party 5 in the wild, but it was loose. And for the GameCube, I really like to get them, if not complete, at least with cases. Because I don't really want to run across damaging the games and they're so small it's way easier to keep up with them if you have them in the the bigger cases you know instead of just the little disc because uh, i i lost my case for mario party 4 and twilight princess and neither one of those games work and i've had to move several times i wouldn't be surprised if through all the moving and them not being in a case is what did them in and it's it's a real shame that uh you know i'm gonna have to go back and buy twilight princess coming in at number seven is the Star Fox series. Yes, I'm kind of cheating. At number seven, I have Star Fox Assault and Star Fox Adventures. That's mostly because I have never played either one of them. Recently, I went back and got Star Fox 64, played it a good bit, and I enjoyed the Star Fox 64 game. That does not mean I'm very good at it. So uh, here's the deal with these two games if you don't know. Star Fox Adventure, from what I have gathered, now remember, I've never played it, but I've watched YouTube videos on it, and I've done some reading, and apparently it was a scrapped game that they reskinned as Star Fox. Uh, Star Fox Adventures, I should say. And it's, from what I've gathered from the gameplay, it's, it's kind of a little open world. Maybe, maybe it kind of reminds me of, say, uh, Ratchet and Clank. Not necessarily open world. Uh, it's, I guess it's linear, but, you know, you still have that, like, Super Mario 64 kind of feel to it. And I could be absolutely wrong. I've never played it. But to me, it looks like it might be the more fun of the two. And I think it's the cheaper one, but I, I could also be mistaken there. Star Fox Assault and Star Fox Adventure, I've never seen a game's price fluctuate so much. I've seen that game going for $30. I've seen it going for about $10. So, I, I really don't know what to make of the prices on those games. And of course, Star Fox Assault, I think, is a bit more true to the form. You know, you're in your ships, you're in the Landmaster. Uh, it's more about on-rail shooting, combat, all that good stuff. I don't know which one I'd like more. I really am kind of an open-world 3D platformer kind of guy, mixed with some, some beat-em-ups. Like, some of my favorite games are... You know, like Uncharted and Last of Us, stuff that Naughty Dog does. But then stuff like uh, Insomniac does with Spyro or Legend of Zelda and Mario. So those kind of games are what I gravitate towards, which makes me think I would like Star Fox Adventures more. But I, I could be wrong. That's why I want to get both and test them out. You guys can just let me know what you guys think of Star Fox Adventure and Star Fox Assault. I did like Star Fox 64, so I think I would like Star Fox Assault as well. We'll just see. Coming in at number six is Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Uh, I can't believe this game is only at number six. This was one of the few GameCube games that I played a lot of during the GameCube era. Uh, and especially one of the few non-Nintendo, kind of non-first party games that I played a snot ton of this game. I'm not kidding you guys. Ty one and two when we were getting babysat by our grandmother, she loved these games too. Now, she never really played games, but all three of us had accounts on this game. And I don't remember if it was the first one or the second one, but she actually beat us to 100%ing this game. 
that's how much we all loved this game. And this, this is probably the game I owe the most to being into 3D platformers and collectathons because we are all this and probably Super Mario 64 because we are all racing to get that at 100%. I remember this game kept up with it and we couldn't do it but my grandmother did and those memories have just stuck out to me. You know, I haven't played this game since I was a little kid. Maybe I have some nostalgia glasses on, you know, maybe I'm blinded by uh by the past. But I remember just loving this game to death. You know, he gets the different boomerangs. He gets, uh, there's a lot of collecting to do, some good platforming. I remember nothing but good thoughts about this game. I even think the characters are really enjoyable. A couple of them stand out to me, but like I said, it's probably been easily 10 May I, I don't want to I don't want to say the name the dates wrong since I don't know when these games came out but I'd say it's easily been over 10 years since I've played these games and I just can't wait to acquire them and play through them now I never knew there was a a tie three I can't remember what it's called I think three came out on the GameCube slash PS2 and I think they did a fourth one on Steam but uh, don't quote me on that because I I could be wrong like I said I didn't fax check before I started this video. So hopefully nothing I'm saying is wrong. Coming in at number five is Resident Evil 4. And in my opinion, this may be the best game on the GameCube. It may be the best game of this generation in this era. I know it kind of blurs because it came out on the Wii as well and it got remade a bunch. So I don't know exactly what this game would be considered, but in my opinion, it may be the best game on the GameCube. It may be the best game on the PS2. The, so there's a reason it only comes in at number 5 on my list. A. I've beat the game maybe 20 times. Okay, this was my favorite game before the 360 era. And the Wii era and the PS3 era. So I, I just played it a snot ton. For me, the Resident Evil series was always a part of my family. My dad loved Resident Evil 1 and 2. I don't remember if he played it on the PlayStation or the N64, but regardless, he played that game a bunch, and we all watched him play it. Don't remember 3 too well as a kid. I've played 3 since becoming an adult, but Resident Evil 4, I remember renting the game based off watching my dad play it a bunch. Now, I'm not into horror stuff or survival stuff. In fact, Resident Evil is one of the few kind of survival horror games. I know Resident Evil 4 is not really that. But the Resident Evil franchise is one of the few survival horror games I'll actually go near. And I remember getting this game home, popping it in. Now, mind you, I don't I don't know how old I am. Probably, maybe just now a teenager, maybe. And walking down to the first cabin. And, you know, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm kind of on edge. You know, there's no zombies, nothing like that. You do get attacked. And I remember thinking, okay, this is crazy. And I'm running down the, the hill. And, you know, you come across those cabin kind of things set up every once in a while. A sheds maybe is a better word for it and I go in and this dude just pulls out what is it like an axe or something like that and just cleaves you in the shoulder with it man it was it was terrifying to me at that time I remember I had to stop playing and just make peace with the fact that this game was uh, too scary at some point uh, a little later in my life I guess we bought it or maybe rented it and kept it forever I, I don't know and I beat the game and just had to keep playing because you got what was it the Chicago was it called the Chicago typewriter or am I making that up and the infinite rocket launcher and there were plenty of collectibles and plenty of secrets the boss fights were crazy Leon was awesome we played this at my grandmother's and she did not like swearing so she didn't enjoy this game too much okay what was I saying? She did not enjoy this game at all because uh, it sweared a lot. And at this time, we hadn't really played the Grand Theft Auto series, which I don't know which one had more swear words. I would venture to say the Grand Theft Auto series, but Resident Evil 4 was right there with it. Uh, so we weren't really we weren't really exposed to this kind of language in video games either, but it ended up being okay. We, we beat the game a bunch. It became easily my favorite game of the GameCube. Um, but the PS2 version is kind of better because it comes with the Ada Wong side quest and I have it downloaded on the 360 so if I really wanted to play the game again I can go back and get achievements this time around and kind of validate why I'm playing this game again so in my opinion 
if you're just collecting for the GameCube, make this one of the very first games you get. Uh, as long as you know you're an adult, if you're buying for your kid, yeah, it, it's you know Leon can get his head cut off by a chainsaw, and it's kind of vulgar. So maybe don't maybe don't buy it for your kid. But if you're an adult buying for the GameCube, I highly recommend you pick up this game. If you're not buying exclusively for the GameCube, maybe pick it up on the PS2 or download it off of Microsoft or I'm sure it's on the Sony uh, store as well. So there's there's better ways of playing it. The GameCube is actually probably not the best way of playing it. But like I said, if you're collecting for just the GameCube, it's an amazing game. And this goes for Resident Evil 1, 2, and 0, the remakes. Because uh, I played them all on the GameCube. And they're all pretty good. I mean, I really like 0. And 1 and 2 is not bad either. I'm pretty sure 2 is out on the GameCube. It might not be. But I know 0 and 1. I even think 3 is. I saw 3 on the GameCube, and I never knew that until a couple of months ago when I saw it. Um, so yeah, just buy the Resident Evil games on the GameCube. They're, they're really good, and some of the few uh, survival horror M-rated games you're going to come across. Coming in at number 4 is Mario Kart Double Dash. Would you believe me if I told you I've never played this game ever? I don't think I've ever played this game. I did not pick it up when the GameCube was out. I didn't pick it up when the Wii was out. And by the time the GameCube and the Wii came around, nobody in my state, county, city played Nintendo. Very few. Everyone at school was really obsessed with the PS2, PS3, Xbox, Xbox 360. I was really hard pressed to find anybody who cared about Nintendo at this point in time. Mind you, around the time Mario Kart Double Dash came out, I'm probably I'm probably 10, maybe a little older, depending on when Mario Kart Double Dash came out in the life cycle. And when the PS2 came out, in, in my neighborhood, in my uh, county, nobody cared for Nintendo. When I went to school, nobody was talking about Mario or Zelda. I mean, Zelda was always kind of popular, but at this point in time, the PS2's coming out, Games like Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, God of War, uh, are they're, they're the big buzz around my school. You know, that's what people are playing. Grand Theft Auto, Halo. Uh, I don't know when all these games came out into relations of each other, but I know everyone in my school was obsessed with Grand Theft Auto, obsessed with Kingdom Hearts, obsessed with Halo. Um, so I don't know if Call of Duty was as big of a player back then as it was by the time I got into high school. But yeah, the, those were the popular games. So I never came across Mario Kart Double Dash. Never played it as a friend's house was the whole reason for that story. Now that I'm an adult, now that I'm with Jessica and I like playing two-player games, Mario Kart Double Dash just screams to me a game that I really need to play. I've heard some people say it's the worst game in the series. I've heard other people say it's the best game in the series. And I personally really like Mario Kart 8, the new one that came out on the Wii U and then got ported over to the Switch. I really enjoy that game. But this one's got the, you know, the tag team, and that seems really interesting. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos of people playing this game, and it just seems like something I, I gotta play, man. I gotta play it. Haven't really come across it too much in the wild or at a price that I'm willing to pay. So we'll just have to see. I'm on the lookout. I'm on the lookout for this game, guys. Hopefully I can get it real soon. Coming in at number three is Skies of Arcadia. This was originally a Dreamcast game. But from my understanding, from YouTube videos I've watched and such, it got, you know, the Dreamcast kind of petered out. I, I never heard of the Dreamcast until way later in my life. <laughs> so it got ported over to the GameCube. I think it got ported to the GameCube exclusively, though I could be wrong. I and mean, from what I've heard, they've added some stuff. They fixed some of the flaws that the Dreamcast port had. I and mean, yet again, it's not a game I can sit here and talk about for 30 minutes because I've never played it. But I am collecting for the GameCube. I do love me some RPGs, and the GameCube is pretty slim pickings. Like, when I look at top 10 GameCube RPGs, there's there's some bit of stretching going on with some of these games. Or they don't look very good, you know, one or the other. So Skies of Arcadia is up there with one of the best RPGs on the GameCube. So, you know, I gotta pick it up. It's just a matter of finding it in the wild at a price I'm comfortable paying. But I definitely want this game, and I'll definitely do some kind of discussion-style video when I finally get my hands on it and can play it. 
Coming in at number two is Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Probably the game that told me I was okay playing RPGs. I know for the generation before us, Earthbound and Mario RPG kind of helped children get into games like Final Fantasy or Dragon's Quest or what have you. But for me, growing up on the N64 and GameCube, I didn't play a lot of Final Fantasy. You know, the, the N64 didn't have that stuff. We had Paper Mario, and that's what I played. And when I got to the GameCube, it was Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, probably one of the few GameCube games I actually played during the GameCube's lifespan. I love the humor, I love the art style, I love the characters, I love everything about the Paper Mario series. I have, I've stuck with the series, I played Sticker Star, I'm playing, what is it, Color Splash on my Wii U right now. I did play, like I said, I played this game as a kid, and I love everything about it. I recently got Paper Mario 64, and just super excited. These games are the types of games that really make me happy to just sit down and play. You know, they're not too hectic, but they, you know, most of the time they got an okay story. They got really engaging characters. It's really funny to read. And uh, it, it doesn't feel like a chore, you know. A lot of RPG games can lose you. They can make it a grind fest or make it unfun to play for a bit. I don't really get that with Paper Mario. Even if it ever got grindy or kind of uh, monotonous, the art style is still really pretty. And the characters are, are still really fun to play. So I don't really have anything bad to say about it. It's been a while since I've played Thousand Year Door. I played it on an emulator probably, I don't know, maybe five years ago after I played Paper Mario 64 on an emulator. And I, I really enjoy those games. And it's uh, right there at the top of my list of games I want to pick up. But the only other game I'd rather have, probably more than Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, on the GameCube is Kirby's Air Ride. That may surprise you guys. I don't know. Because I've been watching some hidden gems and some underrated GameCube games. And Kirby's Air Ride is consistently on the list, which surprises me. The reason that this game's so high on my list is my brother and I, we're, we're pretty close in age. I'm about two years older than him. Uh, we, were, uh, we were big into the same YouTube channels and the same games. And we were basically twins a lot of the time, you know. And Kirby's Air Ride was a game that we enjoyed a fair bit of. Like I said, I, I don't know if we played this game during the GameCube era or during the Wii era on our Wii, but we loved this game. And a couple of the YouTubers that we watched at that time, mind you, this is 2008, 2009, were really big into Kirby's Air Ride. And we thought this is the craziest thing ever. You, there was one YouTuber in particular who was making these videos. And so naturally, we busted out a, a camcorder and filmed ourselves playing Kirby's Air Ride. And that was really one of my first experiences of doing YouTube was Kirby's Air Ride back in like 2009. Me and my brother playing through the city trial because we were going to 100% the checklist in this game. But we never finished, sadly. But it, it was still fun times playing through this. We made a handful of videos and it was really fun. Nowadays, I want it because I tried showing Jessica some gameplay footage of it, and she just said, eh, I don't really know what the big deal is. I was like, well, we gotta change that. We gotta change it. Recently, I found it like twice at uh, some mom pa game stores, but I did not like the price. I was not comfortable with the price that they had it at, and so I had to walk away from this game twice, but I might be getting it soon. We'll see, we will see. Uh, other things about the game, is extremely diverse. It's got the top-down racing mode. It's got the regular racing mode, so it's like any other racing game. And it's got City Trial, which is an open-world, almost RPG, almost brawler-like game because you start off all on the little Warp Star cars, if you will, and then you drive, and you try to pick up power-ups for your car along the way. And you can, all, I said it's a brawler because, you know, you can charge up and you can hit the other racers and stuff like that. And then there, it turns into, once the city trial is over and you get all your upgrades, it turns into, um, like Mario Party in a way. There's a bunch of mini games. They'll either be like, kill a bunch of enemies, race this, this lap, or try to see who can glide the highest or the longest. Stuff like that. It, it's just so many 
elements of different genres and different games all fused into one. It reminds me a lot of what they've done with Smash 4 with the city, uh, what's it called? World Tour or City Tour or something like that, where you go around the board collecting your power-ups and then you all fight each other in between the rounds. Kirby's Air Ride City Trial reminds me a lot of that. And it's just, it's just so crazy. It's one of the most unique games on the GameCube, I would say. Uh, now, I feel bad for Kirby. He almost never gets just a straight-up platforming game. They're always trying to add some kooky little element or spin-off to him. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, they're always trying to add some kind of kooky element to him or uh, spice him up in some way. They can't just ever let him have a good old classic platformer. But uh, his games are always fun. I genuinely like Kirby as a character. I like his games. Like I said, I'm on the lookout for multiplayer games and going back and getting some of the games that I loved as a child. And uh, this easily checks off most boxes. But this video has been going on for 30 minutes almost. It'll be a little shorter after editing, depending on how long I uh, talk during this finale here. So I'm just going to say no honorable mentions because I might make a part two. If you have any recommendations, leave them down in the comments. Or if you have any... Uh, if you're curious about a game I have, like I have Super Mario Sunshine, that's why it's not on the list. So that's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like. Go ahead and leave a comment, like I said. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I'm trying to put up more discussion style videos and really talk about video game playing and video game collecting and having fun with it as a hobby. Um, so if you enjoy that, go ahead and subscribe and stick around because there's going to be more videos like this. Thank you guys for watching.